At the center of the universe, at the border between the light and the dark, stands Castle Grayskull. For countless ages, the heroes of Grayskull have defended the universe against the forces of evil. Walk through the Hall of Living Pictures and learn the history and mystery of the masters of the universe. Dive deep into the mythology of Eternia, Etheria, and more. For those who know the stories of Grayskull will come the power. The power to be supreme. The power to be all-knowing. The power to be... Legends of Grayskull. everybody and welcome to episode 7 of Legends of Grayskull, the fan podcast where we discuss the history, the mystery, the magic, the mythology of He-Man, She-Ra, Eternia, Etheria, Primus, Golden Books, Lady Bird Books, UK Annual, Kid Stuff, Filmation, Mike Young Productions, <clears throat> DC Comics, Mini Comics, anything you can think of if it's got that Masters of the Universe, Princess of Power, He-Man logo on top. I'm Matthew Dooch. I'm here with Sean Skavarna. Sean, how we doing? Great. Let's do this. We're gonna we're gonna dig into the filmation issue. Yeah, here it comes. There you go. The filmation issue number four of He Man and the Masters of the Multiverse today. Yes, pig- this one I think everybody's been waiting for. They want to see their filmation. Yes, and this is the way. I know last time we waited for a bit before we did any of these, and we kind of did a bunch at once. Um, this one, though, after I know me at the reading, it the first thing I did was message Sean is like, "We got to do this." Like, <laughs> um, he did, folks. He did. I really did. I, I'm like, <laughs> I can't wait for this one because. Yeah. Um, well, we'll get into it, but but yeah, after reading this, I'm like, we need to discuss this now. I'm not waiting, you know, two three months. Excuse me, and you know, maybe maybe we'll start doing that. Every we probably will. I mean, it's two issues left. We'll probably discuss issue five and six when they come out too. Sure. Um, but yeah. So for those of you who haven't picked it up yet, um, pause us here. Go read it. We'll wait. Um, if you can't get to comic shop, download it on Comixology. Um. All right, thanks. You're back? Good. Okay. Yay! Uh, so, yes, this is into the Filmation universe. So everyone's yep. been highly anticipating this. Um, I know Sean and I have a lot to discuss, even so, where we usually try and not discuss our topics off camera, just because I like to surprise him with some of my thoughts. He likes to surprise me, and it, it makes a good back and forth. But this is one mm-hmm. where even we could not resist. So <laughs> I think first yeah. we'll just kind of go through the story of the issue and maybe pick apart some stuff that's actually into issue and then we'll get into uh, the other stuff. So, um, but basically you're, 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 as we saw at the end of issue three when we were leaving the 2000X universe, this one picks up uh, in, in the filmation one. And let me do my credits real quick. Because we keep getting the format down, even though they put the credits at the end now. Is that? Do you read a lot of comic series? Is that is that normal now? That the it depends. Uh, like it, it doesn't feel like every series starts off with that page anymore. Like when we were kids, mm-hmm. it's always like it could be three pages in, it could be the end of it, whatever you know. Okay. Yeah, that's so. it's really it's really bugging me, and I'm not sure what. Maybe just because I don't read enough comics nowadays. Uh, but so, Masters of the Universes, Part 4, writer Tim Seeley, artist Tom Derenick. Uh The colors are Matt Yaki. The letters are Seda Tamafante. I apologize if I'm not getting these names right. Uh, the cover was done by Inhuk Lee. Uh, the editor was Michael McAllister. With a special thanks to Rob David and Melanie Shannon Hill. And Rob David, he's, he's the Mattel side of all of uh i think he's the entertainment manager right not specifically masters i i want to say he's at least when he was over google i I think they had said he was mattel creative that's what it is yeah on that he's kind of all these 
all the tie-in kind of stuff, comics and uh, like the movie and like the Netflix series he's also on. Um, Melanie Shannon Hill. Okay, and to, uh, yeah, she's in a photo there too. I, I don't remember hearing her name before. Uh, but yeah, she's also a content, creative content manager. Um, okay. And it looks like she's, she's part of... Now here it says Rob David is actually a vice president now of Mattel. So yeah, well maybe, the the interview I'm remembering was a while ago. So maybe so maybe that Melanie surprise me. maybe Melanie took over his old job and now he's a little higher up. Um, it's possible. Yeah, I should have looked into that more before. Before we look, yeah, it looks like it looks like Rob David is actually a VP now, and Melanie's the the creative manager. So. But basically, they're the ones from Mattel approving all of this and sending it along. Mm -hmm. So, we open up here. I'll give a brief overview just of the whole issue first, and then we'll jump into our thoughts. Uh, so, we open up in Eternia, the royal city of Eternos, like we always know from the filmation. So, you got He-Man, Skeletor, and Man-at-Arms. Excuse me, Skeletor. He-Man, <laughs> Orko, and Man-at-Arms. Uh, and they're discussing a recent victory, very moral-esque. Uh, you got Keldor in 87 movie He-Man kind of listening in on them. They're hiding in like a, a vent or something. Uh, and and so then you've got uh, the sorceress contacting He-Man and telling him that there there's a, a problem. She hasn't heard from Zodak. Uh, uh, he changes back into Adam so he can make an excuse uh, to his parents that he has to go track down the Star Seed because um, Sorceress is worried that something that you know something's wrong with it. Uh, he Man and Keldor and Adam then travel to the where the Star Seed is, uh, followed by Anti Eternia. He Man, there's a battle there, and and then. Uh, 87 movie actually ends up trying to use the star seed to conquer him, to you know to beat anti attorney he man and he starts getting corrupted um adam and keldor work together to destroy the star seed um skeletor jumps in there for a bit and 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 they're able they're able to destroy the star seed and save 87 he man uh but anti attorney he man escapes um, and that's a basic overview of the story. Um, so, uh, it's kind of hard to decide where to start with this. <laughs> this has a really good story premise. I, I like the idea of the star seed. Um, for those of you who just listened to or recently listened to episode six and a half, we did the the search, which was the filmation episode dealing with the star seed, and even there they were saying they had the power to corrupt. Yeah. So I like that idea. I like the idea that they're going, and it's all powerful. I like the idea that they're building to this. I wish it had been built up more in the previous issues, because basically the star. I, I don't even think it was mentioned in. Was it mentioned in issue three? I don't even think it was in there. It will, no, I, as far as I remember, because. When I sent you the synopsis, you got annoyed and you're like, spoilers, because yeah. nothing was brought up to that point that the Star Seed was going to even play a role in this miniseries. Right. So for the fact that it's just thrown in here, that was, that was, yeah. I mean, I guess I was going to try and pick apart scenes first, but I guess we just got to go to it. I was going to save the other stuff till later, but basically what this issue boils down to is it's a great story premise, but there's too much story here, and it feels discombobulated to me. It feels disjointed. It's jumping around too quickly. Um, and there's a lot happening between scenes to me. I don't know if you felt the same way reading it, Sean. Um, what I, I'll, I'll say what I said to you in private. I mean, the thing about this issue, like there's a lot of people out there that seem to think this is one of the best ones of the miniseries so far. Mm -hmm. For me, I felt like it was the one where it's starting to completely 
buckle under the weight of what this miniseries is. Yes. There's too many things going on all at once. And like uh, the, it's, it's almost like the prequels with star Wars. You'd never knew who to root for because you had too many characters turn at you on the screen and you didn't know who the protagonist is most of the time. It's not quite to that level, but there's an element of, am I supposed to be rooting for Keldor? Am I supposed to be hoping that he figures out how to do what he needs to do to fight anti-attorney a Mm He-Man? Am I supposed to be rooting for Dolph Lundgren He-Man from the 87 movie who's there and he's basically the warrior that's protecting him through this whole thing? Am I to root for the different He-Men that show up in each episode or each issue, I should say, and and hope they survive because some have and some have not, you know? So there's a lot of different things at play with just the logistics of that. And then when you throw in some of the – you're going from world to world. You're going from mythology to mythology, uh, New Adventures, 2000X, and now Filmation. And it really does – like it's it's basically a blink and you miss it kind of a feeling for me at this point. Yeah. The the series would have been serviced by having two issues – dedicated to each thing so you're not having to throw everything in the kitchen sink into each issue yes. to have the readers enjoy it yeah. in my opinion yeah it's like you know you don't see you don't see keldor in 87 he-man get to this universe um and you don't really see for and it's one of the things we said before it's like okay well maybe this is the he-man that finally makes anti-attorney a pause or maybe he gets close to being and maybe he sacrifices himself to save the others or save the rest of the universe and we don't even get he-man filmation he-man in this he yep. turns back to adam almost immediately and then we see adam the rest of the issue which yeah. to me was just like basically they had the same question because filmation he-man is one of the most powerful he-man out there and you go, well, is he going to give him pause? How's anti are going to beat him? And they go, well, we'll just take him out and we'll leave him at him the whole time. Yeah. And that, Which was that, subverting as hell. Like, that, that right. was not like, how I expected that. This is what we've been waiting for. And yeah. you're just like, nope. Um, yeah. Other than that, I think the Filmation universe, because a big fear of a lot of fans was that the Filmation universe was just going to be one big joke. And I think they treated it well. It's it's it was treated just as well, I think, as two thousand X was in the previous issue. Um, I've got no problems with that. The characters seem on point uh, for who they are. Um, and here again, the beginning is pointing out the difference between them. You know, Keldor's complaining because they're always they're always trying to be so good. It's <laughs> like because that's what filmation was. These. There's no gray in filmation, and I like that. I like going back to that even to this day and seeing the black and white. Like these are your good guys, these are your bad guys, and you know, you don't have to worry about the shades of gray that you see. You know, even that Mike Young started introducing, or you know, especially like Eternity War in that where it got a little murky about it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and even Anti Eternity He Man says that they're not prepared because they haven't seen war. Like, yeah. like he's seen on his Eternia, because that's one where Skeletor won. You know, this is an Eternia where Skeletor has never conquered for more than, you know, maybe a, a, you know, a couple hours. hours. <laughs> a couple hours, maybe, maybe a day or two. I mean, depending maybe a on, day, yeah. on how you want to stretch some of this. But, uh, but yeah, this is, this, is, uh, this is an Eternia that hasn't known the kind of loss that... that 87 did i mean because really even if you dig into the 87 movie into some of the backstory stuff and like the comic book adaptation had some stuff that was left on the cutting room floor is that most of the masters were supposed to have been killed or heroic warriors at that era were supposed to have been killed in the beginning of the movie killed or captured mm-hmm. so like this 87 he man it just d- differentiated him 87 movie he man is one who has lost a lot of comrades in battle and has yeah. had a lot of pain and suffering more so than filmation where yes they have wars and they've had loss but not to that level um what do you think about looking up looking down he man um i found that to be 
I didn't mind it in a, in a certain way, I guess. I, the, the thing that you have to also figure is, like, the Keldor character is going to have more of a, a vernacular like you and I would yeah. in how we handle this story. So the back and forth he has with anybody usually is the reader saying this stuff if you don't know the mythology. So, like, when he when he did those things, and I did get a kick out of – well, who would I be? You know, Adam Asim, who very chipper, you know, yeah. or whatever he says to him. And I, I, I was amused by that. And to be honest, you know, it's it didn't bother me too much. It, it had a certain playfulness to it that the series is lacking. But there is a part of me that's also like, I don't even know if what I would be going through, I'd even be worrying about naming people at this point. Right. It would be more of a, oh, dear God, we're going to die every time you go to these things. Well, that's my thing. It's like, I like it in a way, but at the same time, I don't feel like they've made, they didn't, they didn't succeed in making that trio as close as I think they wanted to. Where made it's a more story. Right. <laughs> it, where yeah. it's, it, you know, it feels like you're trying to force the party instead of organically making, you know, and basically at this point, you brought it up a little bit earlier. I'm saying that this story is about. 87 and Keldor, like they are the stars of the show, which is an interesting choice. Um, but yeah, if they've done a little more, just like I said in the last issue, if they've done a little more making us care about this trio of Tappers, 87 and Keldor, then these moments would have more impact. Whereas where, where it is, I'm like, okay, I see what they're doing there, but it hasn't been earned. Yeah. Um, you can't force that kind of stuff. Well, the, the thing that I told you, and I, I'm still standing by it when it comes to this series in general, is the the best version of this to me is Into the Spider-Verse. Because that story was self-contained within, here is its own unit. It, this is Miles' yeah. New York. This is right. no one else's New York. So you're getting to lo- know these characters through his eyes, and it's simpler. It's right. way more distilled because of the fact he gets to know them from their personalities. Mm-hmm. He's not having to jump from from universe to universe yeah. to then you have okay, now we have to show 2000X and this is what happened to it since the the cartoon ended. Now we have to go and give you a taste of filmation and filmation has to be this kind of a feel to it and we have to establish that and this is issue 4. Right. So, you know, going forward they always have to take some time out of the story to do the establishing stuff in this. And that to me is a huge part of why now I'm feeling this is the buckling issue because I almost feel like most He-Man fans would just flat out. We know filmation, you know, right. that one's kind of like bread and butter for masters yeah. at this point. And it's almost, there is no way of doing it where it would be like into the spider verse where it, like the He-Man from 87 yeah. could have pulled everybody there because the cosmic key is about taking you to somewhere. So it's like the device is great to have as your your uh, MacGuffin of here's how we're getting to all these different places. But then you each issue, it's now we have to go ground up again. Let's introduce this world to you. Let's mm-hmm. do you know all this stuff. Let's set the stage of this is the normal reality of these characters and then when the story progresses, it's halfway through the book, and you're like, "Oh crap! Now we got to resolve this," you know. Right. And then it's on to the next thing, and it's like the breakneck speed. Now it's starting to build, and there's an element of I don't even feel like I had enough face time with 2000 X to right. feel like filmation now had enough, and now we're going to the origin uh, or the the prime Eternia yeah. or whatever. And it's like, how the hell do we get there so quick? You know. Right. And I will say they didn't spend a ton of time like building up filmation as much as, you know, like they did kind of just jump into it here. Um, yeah, and you yeah get, they you, did. You get a lot of dialogue. They fill everybody in on the star seed, which was nice because a lot of people might not have watched that episode recently or maybe never seen that episode, even if they, because, uh, you know, the search is not one that's talked about a lot. Check mm-hmm. out episode 6.5 of Legends of Grayskull for an in-depth review. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> but really, really quick here, uh, it's just, you know, I'll read the sorceress's quote just so anyone who's listening to this first for whatever reason. Uh, the star seed is incredibly dangerous, capable of giving its holder the ability to bend reality to their wishes. Um, so, and and uh, they even mention about, uh, about, they mention the search in this. 
you know, she's, uh, she says, do you remember the star, star seed? And uh, He-Man's like, well, of course I do. That's how Zodak tested me, you know, and everything. So it's nice to see that they did their research here on the star seed and didn't just throw it in there. Um, and like we said, at, at the end of the filmation episode, Zodak took it away from Eternia. And now he's returned it to the core of Eternia. Um, and now the sorcerers can't get a hold of him. Um, because he's been incapacitated at the beginning of issue three, you know, anti-attorney He-Man. I wouldn't say he killed them all. You know, we don't see him killing them all, all the cosmic enforcers, but I got to believe they're at least down for the count right now somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then he turns back to Adam and it's just like, you know, here's, here's another weird thing is the anti-attorney He-Man disguised as Crackers the Clown. I think that's, the part that bugged me the most because it just came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like he has not done this on any other Eternia. Any other Eternia, yeah. he's gone in, he's headed straight for the Power Sword or straight to Castle Grayskull or what you know, whatever. And all of a sudden here he's like, "Well, I'm gonna make a disguise to look like Crackers the Clown." Yeah. And how does that he, was how does he even do that? The like, the only thing I figured is he killed him. And I think that was like their, hey, look, we at least did that for you. Ha ha, it's not funny anymore. Well, yeah, but he, to me, it's like, that was unnecessary. It didn't need to even need to go there, well, that's personally. It, he, yeah, he killed him because we see later with Skeletor, he's laughing because all the circus is freaking out because yeah. they found his <laughs> body. That's right, I forgot about that part. <laughs> and I love that so, Skeletor's having a fit about that. That's great. But like, but, yeah. but like, so is that a suit that he made? Or is that like... Is he supposed to be wearing his skin like Walking Dead style, or I mean, oh, I I don't even know, <laughs> and I I think probably the second thing that you just said probably is what they did to make it feel more hardcore. But there's so cool. many reasons that doesn't make sense because it's like th- that Face Off movie. Yeah, if you put Travolta's face on Nick Cage's body, there's no way they would look identical. Well, it would it, look I like mean, here's this weird saggy face, you know, or whatever. Well, I mean, look at look at Crackers a clown head and neck. And then look yeah. at anti-attorney He-Man's head and neck when he rips off the mask. Yeah. How the hell uh, was that? Part of my French, but how the hell <laughs> was that mask hiding him? How did that suit get rid of his muscles? Like it's not. So yeah, it's it's it just it, it doesn't make sense. If they had even said that like it's magic or something, I would have bought it more. But yeah, that's and it's it's mainly this first part here that that just really bogs down the issue for me. You got a lot of people acting out of character. You know, 87 He-Man thinks it's a better idea to knock out Adam and take them with him than trying to convince He-Man to come along with him. Uh, You know, anti-attorney He-Man killed... It's This whole beginning here, it just, it's too rushed. There's a lot of jumps between the scenes and, and that's what's really bringing it down for me right here. Oh. Yeah, the, the the plan with 87 to me, though, in that part, probably in the movie, He-Man wasn't exactly Mr. Strategist. I'm going to, yeah. you know, like he, he was way more the, uh, you know, there's no stealth. There's not a whole lot of this. It's mostly let me jump into things and let my sword sort it out, which that's kind of, I enjoy that element of that version of He-Man because that was not the filmation one. So there's like, I got that side of it there. And then I got the thinking through, you know, wiser version on filmation. Yeah. But you know, that to me, that doesn't feel that out of character. It's more, we've gone through enough of this crap and he just knocks him over the head and it's the whole, we'll figure it out as we go. We just got to get him away from anti-attorney at least. But, and the, and I mean that, that proves himself even with how he gets the star seed and he, that, like, what's the what's the purpose of this? I'm gonna punch the crap out of you. That's basically his plan. Yeah. And and so in that way, I don't feel it's ridiculously out of character. But yeah, it, it, when you're going through this, I can understand your. I think your take on it is he should be thinking this through better because this is a huge deal compared to the movie, well, even. And even, <laughs> with even then, what's okay, happening. Okay, here. so he knocks Adam out, but then when they get when they get in, no, wrong side. When they get into the chamber, you know they've got. Uh, my left and rights are backwards on here. When they get there, I mean, they're talking for a while before and, yeah. and he's holding the power sword. So let him change back now that you've got him here, at least. Like, 
Mm -hmm. It's it's just that subverting thing. It's like, well, we're not get we're how are we gonna make him beat Filmation He Man? Well, we're not even gonna have him go against him. That's how we're gonna yeah. do it. But uh, but other than that, it's nice to see those crystal demons are there that we saw in the mm -hmm. Filmation episode. Keldor takes them down. Uh, it's nice to see him. You know, and here, but like we said before, this is the saga of Keldor. He's he's growing up. He's taking down these demons. Uh, even when anti, and then all of a sudden, anti attorney He Man's there in the crystal chamber with them. Like when they teleported in using the cosmic key, so it's not even like he has a tunnel to follow, like in the filmation episode. Yeah, he just he gets there. Um, but once he's there, I actually did enjoy this part here. Where he's he's criticizing Keldor, he's making fun of him. You know, even he says, you know, so you can fight when you have to. You can cast spells without it making you scream like a newborn. You know, um, yeah. It just it's it's nice to see that. Um, it's it, there's some good dialogue there between Anti Eternia He Man and Keldor. Um. And then you've got the whole, the whole point of the issue is uh, eighty seven He Man using the power of the Star Seed to uh, to take down to take him down. Um. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I lost my pace here. Uh, while Adam and Keldor get away to uh, to save. 87 He-Man, because Adam knows what's going to happen. They, kn they know that from the from the episode, you know? Yeah. Uh, you get to see 87 movie He-Man fighting with the Filmation Power Sword. That was fun. Um, and you, you finally see... Okay, I guess he does say Zodak was dead. I forgot about that. He does say Zodak is dead now, so he killed him. Um, and we finally see a little bit more about, about, uh, what made Anti-Eternia Anti-Eternia, as you see 87 He-Man being corrupted by the Starseed, and he's turning that black skin with the red armor. Yep. Um, so that, that was good to see, and he says, uh... The star seed contains a dark side, brother. When it within it is the corruption the cosmic enforcer spoke of. But it's not corruption. It is the only purity that exists in all of space and time. Perfect, balanced. Within all creation is anti-truth. This gift is what I shared with my closest friends, with Tila, Man at Arms, and Battle Cat. Even Orko, they thanked me for opening their eyes. So basically, it's the, we finally find out what made anti Eternia different, what separated them from the rest, and it's whatever orb that's in Castle Hell Skull contains part of this corruption that's in the Star Seed, and it basically it it corrupts them, it turns them in, into evil versions of themselves. Yeah, it erases their humanity. So basically, like you said last episode. What would have happened if Orko and the Sorceress hadn't saved He-Man from succumbing to it? This is what would have happened. Mm -hmm. He would have become this this all-knowing ruler um, yeah. who's now trying to destroy the, the universe. And I, I like the scenes with, you know, 87 still fighting on, even as the corruption's taken hold of him. It's about halfway there. Uh, Adam felt in, in tune there. Uh... Uh, trying to work with Keldor to, to reconfigure the cosmic key. Uh, I like that bit, actually, quite a lot. I did. It really felt in tune with both of them, and it, it leads yeah. to... He mentions uh, looking down, looking up, because 87 is always looking down on him because he thinks he's not worthy. Yeah. And uh, uh, at, uh, Filmation He-Man is annoyingly chipper He-Man. Annoyingly chipper He-Man, that's right, yeah. And because that's it. It's like Adam's just like... It is very filmation. Adam's like, all this is happening. Is 87's being corrupted. And Adam's just like, well, come on. we got to find a plan. Let's work with this. How does this work? Let's figure it out. Yeah. You know, um, you know, the stakes are never, you know, there's, it, 
the, you know, Filmation Adam is, is, and he hasn't, he hasn't really suffered any major loss. He's, he's lost here and there briefly, but he's never, he's never been completely defeated. Um, yeah. And you feel it here. And that's the main difference. And they do a good job showcasing that. Um, here's another point where I felt was kind of subverted to my expectations is I was curious what it would happen when Keldor came up into a Skeletor where Skeletor isn't isn't rooted in Keldor. Like, so, so for the original mini comics in Filmation, like Keldor wasn't a thing. And yeah. I was curious how they were going to handle that. And basically they did the same thing where Keldor and Skeletor get no time together and we really don't get a chance to see, you know, so that, that was another disappointment is I was really curious how they would handle these universes where Skeletor is not necessarily Keldor. And, and basically they just zap in there after they've already found the star seed. Cause Adam's hoping that Skeletor will be able to steal it from 87 he man. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that was disappointing as well. And, and he does end up getting the star seed and gets completely corrupted, completely powerful. Um, but then he finds out that because anti-attorney He-Man's more powerful, that he's, he's just going to be a slave to him. Like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> and then that hard's a slave to no one. <laughs> and that was interesting too, that he's, that he's that, it just shows how powerful anti-He-Man is and why he's been able to conquer all these worlds. And so even Skeletor ends up like getting rid of the star seed. Uh, and then Adam's able to destroy it by using the power sword and it blows the top off Snake Mountain, which, you know, that, that was their big kill of the issue. It wasn't, you know, no one actually died, but like, hey, look, we blew up Snake Mountain because every one of these issues so far has had to have a big like wow moment. Yeah. Um, and the sword gets gets flung and it's like sticking out of anti attorney He Man's chest and and he winds up on on the the Prime Eternia. Spirit yep. of Grey School's coming up out of the castle there. I love that shot. Mm -hmm. It looks really nice. Uh, and here again, that's a very mini comic look there. So I'm gonna bring yeah. up, I'm gonna bring it up again that they should have done the the earlier ones in that same kind of vein. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. If they change the art style for the early ones, it wouldn't feel so weird that Filmation and now the Prime are getting their own art styles. Um, and so then we get to the end here where anti or 87 He-Man realizes, you know, he, he went too far, but they've got to keep going. They've got to save, you know, the multiverse. And that big explosion from the Star Seed did something neat. Um, and it proved Matt right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you said the same thing. Uh, that ending shot yep. showing that he's now half Skeletor. Yep. Uh, Keldor in a very two-faced kind of way. Mm-hmm. Um, and that ends the issue. Um, yeah, he's starting. <laughs> well, it's like what I said, and he said he even said before, earlier in the issue, he said... Uh, uh, when you care, you can be manipulated. You can have things taken away. Isn't it better when no one expects anything of you? It's kind mm -hmm. of even, like I said before, I'm getting these vibes that, you know, this may not be the best plan. You know, it's going to go one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, but it was neat seeing that half Skeletor face show up. Yeah. Um, but other than that, this uh, this story was rushed, in my opinion. Um, and I really expected them to spend at least two issues I was expecting four and five, or at least four and half of five to be filmation, and then maybe like half of five and six be the showdown. We knew they were going to that mini comic universe, that mm -hmm. Origins universe, whatever you want to call it, Prime universe. I think we both saw that one coming. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, and this, this issue nailed it for me. This should have been at least twelve issues. It either yeah. should have been 12 issues, or like Sean said, it should have less planet hopping and more we bring the He-Men together. Um, either one would have worked. Yeah. 
Yeah, I I can't figure out which way I'd rather see it done because like as a, the fans of those universes want to see those. Right. So like you see the Royal Palace of Filmation and this and that. You see the Sorceress. Because if you bring the He-Man to uh, Keldor, yeah. you're eliminating a lot of the nostalgia for all the stuff. And to be honest, um, you know, out of all the issues to this point, I would have hated not seeing the 2000X yeah. universe in the last I- issue. That, for me, out of all the ones they've done to this point, I feel like that had the most depth. Yes. That one had the most, like, it didn't feel as rushed as this does. Um I don't know. Like there's, there's just something about it where I, I think that at the end of the day, no matter what, and, and I, I don't know if we talked about this the last time we talked about the issues or if we talked about it privately, but there is this feeling to this of it being like the equivalent of Marvel did the civil war miniseries. Right. And then uh, like, like there's it, the um, infinite crisis or, or, you know, crisis on infinite earths right. and, it's like these event things, yep, but the difference is. between that and the difference of of that being what that was in DC or Marvel is there's a buildup leading to these events right. becoming a thing where you're showing up and going, I got to see this. What they've done since the uh, Eternity War is here's a miniseries. Here's another miniseries. Here's here's these like events that we think the fans would like to see. So we're going to throw Thundercats and He-Man. We're going to have Superman versus He-Man, and now we're going to have He-Man versus He-Man. Right. But there's this feeling to me of, like, how much weight is any of these things going to have going forward in any kind of a thing they're trying to do? It feels like if you don't show up to this, is there a consequence to that yeah. other than you didn't read it, you know? So – I, for me, I'm I'm going to see it through. I'm not going to say I'm giving oh, up on this at all. I I didn't find it to be that horrible to go. Oh, you know, I'm giving up or whatever. But there is a certain amount of disposability to how the story goes because what's the payoff going to be when issue six hits and we get to that right. final page? Are they going to have like okay, now we're going to do a whole line of Masters comics again? Or is it going nice. to just be, here's the next mini series? Right. And if they do that, that's going to really undercut everything that they're doing in this, to, in my opinion, at least. Well, and like, and like you said, jump back a little bit here. Okay, so Marvel does Civil War. And that's like, say, I don't know how long it was, six issues, whatever. Yeah, six or eight or something like that, yeah. But not only do you have the Civil War book, but you would also have the Captain America book right then would be yes. tying into it. You'd have the Spider-Man book tying right into it. You'd have yeah. anybody who's in this is tied into it. You have uh, Heroes in Crisis, which had to do with the Flash, Superman, Batman. So their monthly yep. titles are also devoted to this storyline. So, yes, it's only a six-issue miniseries, but it's more story than that because if you want the full story, you got to pick up this, this, and this. I mean, if yeah. you're talking six months with you know, over three or four books, that's actually like 18, 24 issues. Yeah. So cramming and all, flesh it out. Cramming all this into one six issue miniseries with nothing else. Like even if they did, you know, and yes, my preferred would be I like the format that they're doing world hopping. Don't get me wrong. I love that idea. And it separates it from Spider-Verse. And I think yeah. that's the way it should be done. But it's too few issues. Oh yeah. Um, they, or like I said to you, what if they t- if they'd taken New Adventures He Man out of his own issue and made him in eighty seven get rid of Tappers because we know how I feel about that. <laughs> if they I had, know. If they had eighty seven and NA He Man show up to get Keldor and then go on, that opens up a whole issue there. So then you can mm-hmm. still spend an issue in two thousand X. Then you could spend two issues in Filmation and two issues in in the mini comics. Yeah. And maybe that would have helped a bit. Because this I want this is one of my favorite story premises out of the four issue series, but it's one of my least favorite issues because it was not done well. It was yeah. not, it jumped around. There was too much unanswered from scene to scene where it's we're just jumping through and stuff happened in between there that we've just gotta assume happened. And I, I don't like that. It made a very disjointed reading experience. 
Yeah, I, I think the one thing to be taken away from this is just how deep the mythology of Masters is. Because, you know, each of those issues that you could have spent time, like you're saying, you know, your New Adventures 2000X, Mm -hmm. Those could have been a six issue miniseries in and of themselves of having here's anti attorney He Man coming to this reality, and you have them doing everything in their power to go up against this guy rather than it just being boom, we're done. Yeah. You know, and that's something that really is driving me nuts with it too. It's anti attorney He Man, there there hasn't been much other than, you know, Dolph He Man getting the star seed and going head to head with him in this issue, which that was one of the few moments where yes. I was like, there's a potential he might die here. And it meant it actually would be a worthy death yeah. because he's going toe to toe at least. Yeah. But we haven't seen anything still that makes him stop and go, Oh crap. Right. You know, there, there's nothing. And there's gotta be a moment where the, the villain sees this could be the moment I'm going to lose here. And right. so he fights harder against the good. Right. I mean, uh, like going to Endgame, we we go to that yeah. here and there as an analogy. But like in Endgame, Thanos got to see he's going to die. Right. Therefore, all bets are off, and he's going to use this this like mm-hmm. basically a kamikaze plan. Yep. To go against the Avengers and turn everything around so that he wins anyway, because if he didn't see that, he probably would just keep doing what he's doing. Absolutely. And in this case, there's like. Anti attorney is almost to, he's he's full of himself mm-hmm. at this point. Like there's nothing that's ever given him like a break in a sweat or caused him to even take a, a, a second win. And that to me by the issue five is a little ridiculous. Right. Like there had to be like why is He Man the most powerful man in the universe if nothing is stopping this guy right. at this point? And we you had, know, and this is the closest ahead. we've gotten to it. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Probably my favorite part of it. And once again, if this wasn't so rushed, we could have seen that in every issue. Like that should have been New Adventures. He Man should have had that before he died, and I would have. I would have cared. Um, yeah. You know, he was barely in his own issue, right? Like New Adventures, was, he was in uh, like probably three pages or that something. Was such a throwaway issue. Like I said, issue two. We'll do that real quick. Where Where do you rank the issues? Because for me, issue two is bottom of the barrel. So issue two is my lowest. Then, honestly, Filmation, issue four here, uh, and then issue one where we are introduced to Keldor, and issue three has been my favorite, the 2000X so far. See, issue three is my favorite no matter what because, right. you know, uh, and not even just my ties to the 2000X and how much I love it. I felt like that was, from beginning to end, it was a pretty nice self-contained issue. Right. While and also the story, moving the same story, the main story it, along. Yep. Yeah, and and so in that way, it's like it fulfilled a couple different things that I was really happy about. Um, the new adventures one, I enjoyed being in that universe in that issue. It actually had me go. I actually would invest some time watching the show now, or you know, be more invested in the figures or whatever. Right. But yeah, you're you're the one that that <laughs> uh, mess with my head and go. Well, why didn't they make it look anime looking then? Yeah. Because they're making filmation look filmation. And why did 2000X look like Mike Young Productions instead of? So yeah, there is a certain consistency. I'd say like three is my favorite mm-hmm. to this point, and then probably one because it set the stage and you yep. you didn't know what you were getting into. And then I, I I'd say it's almost a tie for the new adventures <laughs> and the filmation one right okay. now because. Yeah, uh, I, I'd say actually the filmation one edges out new adventures. The only reason being is the Adam stuff made yeah. me go. I like, even though we're not seeing He Man, we're seeing Adam using his brains, and we're actually seeing why this He Man is this He Man, right? Because of Adam in that way, um, and the toe to toe with with the anti attorney. So yeah, okay, right. that one that one does edge it out then for that because I did like the the eighty seven going toe to toe with. Oh him yeah, finally. that was, that was great. Um, yeah, that's basically where I am. It's like, like I said, it's my favorite premise, but one of my least favorite issues in the execution. I will say, I hope, I really hope that they bring Adam along with them, uh, into the next issue. Um, even though he is just Adam, because he does bring that level of brains to it. And I think they need that to balance them out right now. Cause like you said, 87's just like, 
gung ho war. You know, he says at one point here, you know, shoot, shoot, stab, kill, complete your missions. Like that's yeah. what his mind is. And Adam, I think, will bring a little bit of thought to it that they need right now because they're not beating him by brute strength. The yeah. only way they got close to that was by almost losing 87 to the same corruption, and then you're no better off because then we have to stop 87, you know, as an anti-He-Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, it fits the character, though, to me. Um, the, yeah. the 87, like you said... A lot of the characters were already killed before the movie started because how Skeletor took over the city and he right. took over Grayskull. And no other He-Man has gone up against that. Right. Even like 2000X, the potential would have been there, but they didn't go to that extent to now have right. here are the renegade masters versus the traditional masters the way the show had done it. So it fits with his MO to me. Like I, yeah. I like that idea that – if you don't act fast enough, the people that you love are going to be dead, right. you know, and, and that's very much more of like a warrior mentality than filmation's just going to be like, there's got to be another way of thinking right. this through. So, yeah, I, I like that that would be a good back and forth between them. And then you have Keldor and maybe that's. That's that's the element we need to finally go, OK, this makes sense yeah. for the next two issues. But I I don't know. I, I just part of it is it's like the, it's like these islands yeah almost to me it's like here's an island of thundercats and he-man here's an island of superman and he-man yeah. here's an or injustice i should say yeah and now here's this island and it's like how do they connect do they connect at all if they don't connect yeah. then why am i reading this because i'd like to see something where it's not just like I, I always say the Thundercats crossover for me was basically that was me throwing all of my toy boxes on the floor right. and going nuts Injustice to me was, you know, I don't like that universe because I'm not that guy when it comes to how Superman's represented. So He-Man wants to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, bring it. Yeah. I like that. That's cool because at least a character that represents good is going to fight somebody who used to represent good, right. you know. And this one, it's like, what? what's the point of this other than they can do it? And, and yeah. we're playing with a character that hasn't been represented in, in media other than in Germany. And that's... And that's the thing. Well, like I start, I think I got sidetracked earlier, but like the starseed element, like why wasn't that objective from the beginning? Why weren't they hopping from eternity to eternity trying to find the starseed? Like yeah. that would have, that's what we're missing. We're missing that cohesion, that, that propel right now. Like the early, the first three issues were just like hopping, like, Hey, let's try and catch up with him, but we can't. Or when we do, we, someone dies. And Whoa. And, and now all of a sudden it's like, well, we got to find the star seed. Well, if that had been their motivation from the beginning, it would have given them a purpose. Like they know of it, but they don't know which Eternia it's on. Um, I, something like that. Some more cohesive, yeah. tighter story here. Like, like you said, why are we doing this? Yeah. And uh, I mean, honestly, here's what I'll forgive it with mm -hmm. what you just said. I'll forgive it for the fact that you have Dolph He-Man, 87 He-Man, whatever we're calling him. Yeah. He, again, he's the warrior mentality. The warrior mentality in this case isn't really thinking a plan through right. beyond I'm going to stop him. Tappers is just whatever. Yeah. He's there. And all these other He-Men have already been killed. Right. So uh, the idea of, okay, we have to stop him is more Dolph just going, we're going to the next one and I'm going to fight him there. Basically, at this point, we're going to have Keldor with us and hopefully, you know, we'll make something work. Right. So it, it's got that kind of we're doing the best we yeah. can in this situation. And this guy's just swallowing up He-Man's yeah. left and right with the pet. He's got all these power swords. He's collecting all this stuff. But, yeah, you're right. There, there were, It would have been nice to have someone other than those characters being there going, maybe this is a better option and going here. And then that would have been your whole story arc. Right compared to each issue it's a different thing mm -hmm. and now in issue four we're halfway through as of last issue yeah. so issue four now we're going on okay well this is what we should be doing all along and there, there's a certain amount of you're looking around going it, it's like smallville you know there's yeah. a certain they, they they got through issue five or, or season five right and then season six on it felt like now we got to turn this around 180 degrees because we kind of wrote everything we needed to about high school yeah now what, you know, and this show's exactly just going to keep it. going because they're renewing us. Oh God, you know, and 
Yeah, and that's what it feels that, like. It feels like you're yeah. missing that story. I mean, you could have easily done it because Gwildor is the one who sent them on this mission. So it's not insane to go, instead of Gwildor saying you have to find Keldor, Gwildor saying you have to find the Star Seed. And that's yeah. He Man's mission now. And, you know, it's. And you got to remember that about him, too, like you were saying. I mean, not only did he lose everything that we know of in the movie, but he's lost everything since then because he says he killed Gwildor, he killed the Sorceress, he destroyed Castle yeah. Grayskull. Like, everything's gone from him. So, yeah, yeah it's it's in character for, for He-Man. Um, the other thing disappointing, like I said, I hope they bring Adam along, and I'm disappointed that with, with 2000X He-Man surviving that he didn't come along. Like, yeah, it seems yeah. like they should be gathering an army or so, like doing something to make this world hopping worthwhile. Yeah. You know? No, I, I I agree with that completely because he he's still a viable he man right. at the end of last issue, and that was part of why I loved it. I'm like, holy crap, he's not dead. You know that that made my day. I'm like, Tappers, he, you know, f that guy. But at least we got you know 2000 X He Man still around. He's not dead, and, now, and he didn't even he didn't even turn back either. Yeah, he's even he-man. after he's got the power sword, he's still a, a he man. Yeah, so it's not even like he lost that. So why are we leaving this guy behind? Like, yep, yep. Those are those yeah. are my things with it right now. I'm, I, and that's the thing. Like, I hate, I hate looking at like somebody that's doing this and saying, "You're not doing it right." But there is a part of me that's like. This is how it would work if I was writing yeah. it and I was making it up on a monthly basis versus having like an overall, this is what should be done. Mm-hmm. So then we can hit these points right. and then boom, the story feels fulfilling. I'm not trying to say that Tim Seeley is doing that because I'm sure he had some sort of a roadmap and plan he right. had to address to Mattel in order for them to go, yeah, this is a cool idea. Let's do this. But – uh, the the biggest thing for me is you know like if you're going to bring He Man back into media and you're going to bring him in uh, like we're having two shows coming out yeah the movie potential is still on the table Netflix is going to be our you know this is where we're going to see all this stuff now right. and all that and it's like you know these comics are still there and that's great but the the problem for anyone who wants to get into this stuff and this being what's out there now, it's like, yeah. this does not feel like this is going to matter when it's finished. Yeah. It feels like this is going to mm-hmm. be, it's like, this is the biggest filmation episode ever. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's like, here's your overall mini series. And now we're done. And the next thing is going to be something not even related to what you just read. And that bothers me in a way. It's like, I kind of want to see, a, a, an actual ongoing and have Rob David yep. being a, a, a you know a, yeah. a, a steering the ship in this case you yeah. know captaining least, this and and like here's what he'd like to tell in this story yeah. arc or whatever and and building it up again rather than I don't need events and I don't need this I need substance yeah, you know I in, st- a, in a I way still, I still hope that's where this is all going like I said I'm still holding on to my hope that at the end of this. It'll create like a new Eternia, an Origins Eternia, whatever, and that will have an ongoing. Um, and that would make it worthwhile. Like I said, there's still time to pull it out. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I'm two not. Two issues, though. <laughs> I have only two issues. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not even really. I guess it, I guess it's like the parent thing. I'm not mad at this issue. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I'm disappointed and no and, Netflix and, for a month. And really, that's it. I'm disappointed in this issue because it's got a great premise and poor execution. Um, And all these things that we were leading to, these things I was looking forward to, were all subverted. And that's Smallville right there. You want to say Smallville. It's like, we're leading up to something. Oh, but it's completely different than what it should be. Like, Yeah, yeah. And that's disappointing. I will say one, one last thing. Um, and I meant to bring this up in both of the episodes that we did before. Um, big surprising thing to me that I keep thinking of when we're off the air and you triggered it a minute ago. We have not seen Eternity War He-Man in this anywhere. Yeah, you'd think with Rob David he would have went there. but Well, in DC, the- that is their, that's their own version of He-Man. That was like their big saga. And he hasn't shown up at all besides the cover, you know, that, that split... Uh, cover for issue one you know you can see the eternity sword there you know in, in his outfit there but that's it well that that would lead to speculation which at this point we did speculation on the last one and i'm kind of wanting to see if that works i'm yeah. not interested in like doing more but 
two issues left. Who knows? It, like yeah. if he's saying that the the mini comics canon that he's gone to now is the prime attorney or whatever. And then what if they're going to say, okay, whatever happens in that issue, then it's boom, eternity war yeah. canon. And that's where it finally, all of it happens. I don't know. Um, yeah, do that's I. a good point though. That's a very good point. And that's, that's so. kind of what's in the back of my mind too, not to get into a whole speculative thing, but it's like every other He-Man here we've seen or will seen that we know, because the only other one missing is the, the mini comic barbarian one, which we're going to next issue. So does it end up in eternity war, which would be, God, I'd hate to see the backlash if that's, that's where it ends. Well, the other option, not to, not because I'm not trying to do this to you right now, but the other yeah. option is what if they do something really, really nuts, like the last issue reveals revelation to us. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, and that's our first. It could lead this, into that too. Yeah, this, these these are the designs for the new Netflix series. It'll be like the big let's blow the roof off the joint final yeah. issue. We're going to show off these are how the characters are going to look. And then the series starts. Yep. So that would be a hell of a way for them to introduce that and put the put it out there one way or the other. Hey, there's a new thing coming out that, you know, if you want to watch He-Man, here's this. Well, you, you know, in that in that original press release, it did say that Revelations follows. What did they say? Something like a cataclysmic world shattering battle or something like that. Yeah. That uh, sure sounds like an anti-Eternia He-Man raging across the universe, don't it? Well, the other thing, too, is they, they kept saying how Mattel now wants to do all this cross-media marketing for all their brands, yep. and they're launching it with Masters. Yep. This is pretty much your – if you want st- to start yeah. there, start ground zero. Here's the comic books leading into the new era of what yeah. we're about to hit. I'm not saying that's what I want to see, but there's an element of it where I'm like, no, you're right. That I mean, would be it's... a hell of a way to end this and, and add more, more of a viewpoint or more spotlighting. Mm-hmm. This is what we're about to get. And I think that would bring in people going, holy crap, I got to read this issue because yeah. now I'm getting to see what the character designs are going to look like. And we're going to get an idea of the characterizations or whatever. Yeah, and, and it, it leads if they do end up doing that, that merge universe crisis on infinite earth style at the end, it gives you a little leeway where you can pull some elements of filmation, you can pull some elements of mini comics and you can say, okay, yeah. this is like I said, it's the same thing basically that I was saying, except I kept tying into origins, you know, it'd just be tying into revelations instead. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah, almost feel I it's know. too early though. I, I will say that yeah, I, was, I feel like it's too early because yeah. revelation that's supposed to either hit in the fall or even at the the marketing thing at Toy yeah, Fair. Yeah, that was interesting. They said that's going to be 2021 now. Yeah, it's I like, can't believe they're waiting that long. I mean, even if, the first if, quarter would be way too long to sit on this. If they're already doing recording sessions, I don't know the, the production schedule of a cartoon. I'm never going to admit that I know all this stuff, but it's, it's like – not that long nowadays. If they're, if they're recording this stuff yeah. right now and we got shots of Mark Hamill, Lena Headey – uh, 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 Chris Wood yep. and everybody else, it, it, they're doing their parts. How is that going to take until 2021 for us to get these serious? It's February, right? You know, like, I mean, you're talking you're the, talking 11 months at the earliest, and they're recording already. I think that was a I think that was a typo from Toy Fair. It, it, it's possible, it, but but uh, that's the only thing that I could think of that would have substance to this too. Is that would be the way that you can break this to the fans that. Here's the revelation group now yeah. here it, like that. And, and with them being a more like it, you'll get to see it's a more adult take probably because of that's, th- that's the theory with some of the lineup they have mm-hmm. going into this. And, you know, you get that kind of a, here's, yeah. here's what you're about to witness kind of thing. And there's a part of me going, that would be an interesting way to end it. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll admit that I would definitely show up for issue six. If it's going to turn into <laughs> revelation right there on the comic page, why not? Well, yeah. And honestly, two months left. So we're looking, uh, end of, end of May or April, we, we would be finishing up this comic. And I know one of the rumored dates was like June for the Netflix series to drop. So, I mean, that's, we're close. That would be a pretty, not terrible lag time. Dovetail it right into it. Possibly. Um, and they're saying it's only six episodes, and I haven't found any re- refu- 
reputable source for that, but they're saying it's only going to be six episodes in Revelation. So even if they're six hour long episodes, I can't see the production taken until January of next year. I didn't even know about the, I heard it was a maxi series or whatever they're calling it, where it's definitely like, it's not, it's not like only a couple episodes. The other thing too, I don't know if they're doing multiple seasons or if this is all we're getting, if the revelation is just this, but Castlevania, I think that started with three episodes right? and then they got bigger as it went along and stuff. So I don't know if that's what they're doing here too, where we're only going to give six and then do more. I I haven't even kept up with the behind the scenes on that stuff to that extent, but yeah, like I said, I'm curious because if, if the solicitation for issue six hits and it does something along the lines of what we're talking about right now, I'm going to be like, I don't like that. I called this because I really don't know (laughs) what we're walking into on this. Whereas the other the other uh, universes of He-Man that we're going to, we at least have an idea. In that, it's kind of yeah. like all bets are off. We don't know what anything's going to be at the end of that. Then, so I don't mind calling it necessarily. I just want it done well. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. Um, and that's all I'm looking. I want a good end to the series. Like I said, this issue was a disappointment. It's not terrible by any means. Still, guys, everybody check it out. There are some good moments in this one, too. It's just the things that I was really looking forward to weren't there, and that was disappointing. Um, I'm going to hold tight here. I'm still at a 5 on this, 5 out of 10 on the whole miniseries. Uh, This has not put me up or down. I'm still waiting until issue 6 to get my final final. But right now, I'm still middle of the road. It's, it's It's ups, it's heads, it's downs. Some issues are better than the other. I just hope it finishes strong. What about you, Sean? Yeah, I, this one knocked me down from my previous one. I don't remember what my. I think you were. Th- six. Did I say six or seven? Six maybe or last seven. time. Because I was highest. on the high. Yeah, I was on the high of two thousand X. So yeah. I mean, it's like it, it's that whole. Oh, baby, don't judge me. You don't know what I went through. You know, it's that whole thing. But in the case of this one, this one did knock me down a bit because I was like, it, like you said, a lot of the sub- subverting expectations really did throw me. And uh, I mean, it, like I said, He Man eighty seven He Man versus Anti Eternia was was pretty cool. But at the end of the day, this one, like I said, it, it, it the the weight was obvious in how big this story was trying to be, and it can't pull it off in the amount of issues it's about to get. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, I completely agree. So yeah, I'll be middle of the road with you because at this point. Two issues left, and then I'm going to, uh, okay, here's the overall, you know, and be done with it when we hit issue six, so. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, I think that, I've, I've said all I've said. Any more closing thoughts? Not really, other than if if what I said happens, which I'm not hoping it does, <laughs> I'm just going to be, like, the, the, that issue itself, when we review yeah. it, I'll just be here going, with what <laughs> eyes wide, it'll be like I right. looked into the abyss and it blinked, you know, that kind of a thing. Like, I did not expect that to be. I'd yeah. rather have my army of He Man versus Anti Eternia ver- instead of something along those lines. But oh, I want it, I want uh, it, I want it both. I want the art. That's why I'm sad that they're not uh, accumulating the He Man that are surviving so far. Yeah, get my army of He Man to take them down and then kill yeah. them, and, and the goddess do something to, to restart the universe, and that's the only way. They can stop anti turny He Man's by going back before he got before he gazed into the orb of horror or whatever they called it. Yeah, um, I, I'd be cool with that. Like, give give, give it all to me, give it all, <laughs> go all in. But yeah, I just but with twelve it. issues to make it actually make sense because yes, I th- and not feel rushed. Yeah, it, it needed more issues. And that's what I'll leave it on. I hope I wasn't too down this episode. Um, like I said, there are some good things. I just this issue was a disappointment to me. It was too rushed. I want to see. I want to see that expanded story that's in this issue. It's a great premise, and it it pays homage very nicely to the filmation episode. There's a lot of themes in it that are prevalent throughout the history of Masters. It just was rushed. Yeah. Um, Agreed. So I think it's that time. We're going to ask you, please, if you're enjoying us, uh, click the buttons down below, like. Subscribe, share it around if you want to. Ring that little bell that's down there. That'll tell you when a new episode premieres. Uh, if you got any questions for us, please seek us out on Facebook. You can search for us specifically or join our Legends of Grey Skull Facebook page. And that way we got some discussion going on there. Uh, Sean mm-hmm. goes live once in a while. 
and it's, <laughs> to talk about things from a decade ago. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's just fun, and you, and um, I know, and I know. we look for some we look for some feedback there to let us know what we should do. Um, and and you'll know about all the new episodes as we go forward. So yep. uh, check out the links down below. I've got the link to the Facebook page. I've got links to Sean's art. Um, maybe he'll get back into doing commissions here sometime if his work schedule ever allows him to. Uh, yeah, the work. <laughs> it's uh, October Sun Art over on yes. Facebook. Um, October Sun Art. And until next time. Until next time.